Today I'd like to show you how you can get the most out of the Start from Absolute Coordinates feature with your laser engraver using Lightburn. I'll show you how to create a coordinate grid for your diode laser that will make using absolute coordinates a lot easier. Knowing where your diode laser's absolute coordinates are will allow you to make jigs and templates for objects that you engrave frequently. It'll also help you save time by eliminating the need to guess the framing of your objects. The simplest way to understand absolute coordinates is that the work area in Lightburn represents the physical space of your laser's working area. One of the biggest advantages to use the absolute coordinates feature is to create accurate, repeatable engravings on physical items using jigs and templates. According to the Lightburn docs, the prerequisite to using absolute coordinates is having a laser with homing or limit switches and a fixed origin. The Lightburn docs also have a page on how to calibrate your laser if it doesn't have limit switches, which is linked in the description. First, it's important to briefly talk about how the coordinates on your laser work. Think of your laser as a rectangular coordinate system. It consists of an x-axis, a y-axis, and an origin, the 0, 0, x, and y position. The dimension of each axis is determined by the engraving area of your laser. I'm using the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt diode laser and it has an engraving area of 400 by 415 millimeters. You can find the engraving area of your laser by looking at its specifications. Something to keep in mind is that the origin or 00, zero position can vary based on your laser. My laser's origin is in the bottom left corner. That means positive X goes to the right and positive Y goes up from the bottom left corner. One of the first challenges you'll run into when starting out with a laser engraver is aligning your laser with the designs that you've made in Lightburn. Let me use a quick example. Let's say you have a design you want to engrave on a coaster. You move your laser head, place the coaster under the laser, you turn on start from current position, and then frame your engraving. The framing looks a little off, so you adjust your coaster, hit frame, and make another adjustment. Once the frame looks good, you go ahead and start the job. Now imagine you want to do that same engraving on more than one coaster. You can probably see it would be almost impossible to align the coaster in the same spot each time that you start the job. Not only would the position of the engraving be off each time, but the process would be super time consuming and frustrating too. The way you can visualize the coordinate grid for your laser is by engraving it directly onto something. I used a 25 by 26 inch piece of 5 millimeter plywood. If I had to go back and do it over, I would actually use a piece of MDF instead. The first thing you'll need to do is create pads where the feet of your diode laser can slot into. It's important that the holes for the feet are the exact diameter of your laser's feet so the laser can't move around. I used 3 millimeter plywood for the pads. If you're interested in any of the products that I used to make this project, you can check them out from my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Place your laser on the piece of plywood or MDF. Now use wood glue to glue each pad to the board. I used Tightbond Original Wood Glue. Once the glue is dry, you're ready to burn the coordinates into the board. There's a link in the description where you can download this Lightburn grid file for free. It's sized for a 400 by 415 millimeter diode laser, but you can modify it to fit your laser if you need to. The file will also include the pads that I used for the feet, but just to note that these are specific to the Falcon 2 laser. Once you're ready to engrave the grid, you first need to make sure the working size and the origin are set correctly under device settings in Lightburn. Lightburn does this automatically the first time you connect your laser, but you can always set it up manually later. Make sure to change the start from option to absolute coordinates. Also make sure that your laser is calibrated at this point before starting the engraving. I like to send it to the home position just to make sure that it's calibrated. Now you're ready to start engraving the grid. It took about 13 minutes to finish this job on my laser. After the engraving's done, you have a visual representation of your diode laser's coordinate system. What you can do is cut out and glue a 90 degree fence at the origin. You don't have to use locking teeth like I did, that's just for my jigs, but this will let you quickly put objects at the origin position. Now that we have a grid engraved, we can verify its accuracy by moving the laser to a test position. I'll use the move to position feature to move the laser to 200, 200. I'll go ahead and turn on test fire, and you'll notice that the laser is exactly at 200, 200. Next, I'll demonstrate how easy it is to quickly engrave an object on the grid without having to use framing before starting a job. I have a leftover 100 by 100 millimeter scrap piece of 3 millimeter plywood, 
and I want to engrave some text in the middle of it. I'll make a 100 by 100 millimeter box that will be used as a guide at the 200, 200 X and Y position in the work area and center the text inside of it. Then I'll place the piece of plywood at the 200, 200 position on the grid and start the job without doing any framing. The job is done and it looks exactly like I wanted it to. Hopefully you can see how much guesswork was taken out of the process by not having to do any framing. The most powerful idea behind creating this grid is making a visual reference to exactly where your laser's working area is. Once you've established that, you can start to create jig templates that can be easily slotted in for different items that you engrave frequently. Here's an example template that I made that can hold 10 wooden keychains. And here's another template that can hold four slate coasters. When I want to engrave a new design on these items, I can just open up the template file, modify the design, and start the job without having to do any positioning in the laser's work area. It's a little bit more work up front, but in my opinion, it saves time in the long run if you're going to engrave the same item over and over. I'm going to talk more about creating this specific jig with the locking teeth in an upcoming video. Once you have the template for it in place in Lightburn, it's really easy to create templates for other objects that you might want to engrave frequently. Hey, and if you found this video useful, feel free to take a second and hit the like button. It really helps out my channel. And thanks for watching.